Thank you so much for joining me today on another episode of The Course Consultant Show. I am so very excited today to talk with a good friend of mine and branding expert, Bethany. Bethany is joining me today to talk all about how you can brand your online course. And even if you're not a graphic designer, you can't hire a graphic designer, but you want to have an on-brand beautiful course that you can scale your business with. Bethany is going to share exactly how to do that. So Bethany, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm so excited to talk about this. I can talk about branding and design all day long, all day, every day. So this is very exciting for me. Yes, I'm so very excited to have you. And I want to actually take a moment to share a little bit more about you and how you got started with branding. I've known you for maybe two years now. And I recall from when I first met you, you had, uh, you know, you have multiple businesses. So tell me for people who are brand new to you, how did you get started in this line of work and in your business online in general? Yes, absolutely. So um, I'm the founder of Bethany Works, which is a full service design studio. That's my primary business. That's um, my hub where I run everything out of right now. And I specialize in offering psychology backed branding and design for purpose driven businesses so they can stand out. Now, my road to get there was very windy because as anyone knows, small business entrepreneur, the the road is just a a hot mess sometimes. But what I've learned is to really embrace that. So if we back it way up, um, I started, my undergrad was in um, Bachelor of Fine Arts. That's where I first got started in design. I was working for small businesses and within the industry offering design services. Um, And then I went straight from undergrad to grad school into teaching, thinking that I would have so much time to pursue my art and my my, um, own personal fine arts outside of teaching photography and graphic design. Um, That was not my reality, but I started a side hustle at the same time as teaching. That side hustle had nothing to do with art, if you can believe it. It was personal finance. Um, which, you know, is a little bit opposite for most artists, but I was talking about personal finance and some, that is how I got my first client was someone saw my blog and they were like, Hey, you, I like your writing. Would you write for me? I'll pay you. And I was like, yes, I will do that. And then, and then it just like kept going from there. Was I in love with personal finance writing? No, but I was like, this is cool. I'm a teacher. I can use the extra income. It's going to help support my other passions. Um, and then once I got to know this online community, which was really a diverse community of people offering a lot of different things, I was like, people are making real money online. And then they started to get to know me and knew that I had a background in design. I was teaching design. And that's when I got my first design client. Someone was like, hey, can you help me design this project, design this website? I was like, yes. I will do that. Um, And then over time, I built that into a full-fledged business that replaced my teacher paycheck, and I was able to take it full-time in 2019 now. So that is like, in a nutshell, my little messy, windy journey all the way to where I am now, which is offering um, branding and website design primarily through Bethany Works. Awesome. Yeah. And I'm so very excited to talk about branding because I actually get this question quite frequently from clients. And um, for people who don't know a little bit more about my story, I'll just say just a quick little note. I actually had um, a similar experience to Bethany where I started out in corporate. I was doing instructional design. I had a little side gig where I had also a personal finance website. That's how I met Bethany. We met at a conference called FinCon back in 2019, I think. I'm not yeah. sure. I think it was 2018. 2018, I think something like that. 18. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. So, so I met Bethany at the conference and, um, I similarly was working a full-time job. I saw that people are making money online and then people were asking me questions. Hey, do you make online courses? How do you do that in your day job? And so it kind of converted my little blog about personal finance into creating online courses. Later on, I actually started an agency where I help people create and scale their online courses in an agency forum. And I actually hired Bethany on to help me along with several other people. And so From that point, my business has evolved and changed. In that time, I actually converted my agency into more of a consulting uh, business. And I found that that gave me a lot more space to create the kind of programs that I wanted to um, 
without having to rely solely on the one-to-one -one work. But I have Bethany on today to specifically talk about branding. Um, to go back to what I was saying is because people don't realize that when you're making a lot of assets like workbooks and slides and videos and everything basically for your website, you have to have a consistent brand. And I'm not a branding designer. And so I'm really excited to talk about your framework, Bethany, when it comes to creating an on-brand course. So tell me a little bit more about how you help people with this process to create a beautiful brand, not only for their courses, but just for their business in general. Yes, absolutely. So I specialize in psychology back design. And what that means is that I take color theory, I take archetypes that have been established for a long time. I look at demographics and psychographics and I put together an entire brand strategy that basically affirms all the visual choices that you have. So that's my unique framework and process. Um, and I like to tell everyone, any one of my clients who come to me for custom work is that um, we never start with design. We're, we're never going to do that because that's what should be the result of your strategy. And um, if you're not able to work with a brand strategist like myself or someone else, th then the first thing, the very first thing you need to figure out if you're going to be adding on products courses, whatever it might be, is who you're serving. And I know that um, Melody and I have a lot of overlap on this topic in particular, but you need to figure out who you're serving. And then secondarily, you need to figure out your brand personality and moods so that you can know how you're going to show up for who you're serving. Um, and those two coincide. And that's like your very basic mini, mini strategy that you can kind of do on your own or figure out on your own if you can't work with a brand strategist before you even start looking at all of the design components and visuals. Those are just two, two things that you've really got to nail down. Um, so for the second piece of it, the brand personality and your mood, I actually have a free quiz. It's a brand quiz and it lines up to the brand archetypes. And I did not come up with those. Those were um, originally coined in the 20th century by Carl Jung. And he did a lot of research on the idea that we automatically connect with certain personas. We know certain personas through history, through time, through movies. We know who the rebel is. We know who the jokester is. We know who the hero is. Um, and if you can align your business and brand with those archetypes purposefully, intentionally, then you're making an easier connection with your audience. You're paving a path for them to get to you, which is something that you really should be considering at the beginning of building any of your, uh, you know, assets or, or pieces like that, because you're automatically laying the foundation for people to get to you. Now, um, when you are figuring out your brand archetypes, it can be kind of challenging because there's 12 of them um, and you want to also stand out. So you don't want to just pick one. Um, so my quiz actually will give you your top two and then you figure out how to marry those together in a way that's really unique to you and, and your specific business or brand. Um, and when you're thinking about those archetypes, each one's connected to a human desire. So we all want love and acceptance. We all want to be seen. And it with each one connecting to a human desire, you can think about, okay, what is the people I'm serving? What am I offering them? What is my promise to them? And how is that fulfilling that need or desire? And that will tie in with your brand archetypes. So you're kind of creating this um, really solid personality that will back up how you're going to show up. And I think that this becomes most challenging for people when they're like, well, I'm all of these things. Yes, you as an individual, as a complex human, have certainly been the rebel before. You've certainly been the hero. You've been the lover. You've been all of those. But you have to think about your offers and your business individually, separate from who you are as a person, um, especially at this point. And, and that can be so hard for solopreneurs, um, but it's just really an essential step to take. And that's going to inform how you're talking to people, the copy that you choose, the words that you're going to use for calls to action, and your visuals, things like your color palettes, your fonts, your photos, all of that. Yeah. And I, I like that you mentioned that because one thing I noticed about creating landing pages and websites, because I do all of my own web page design. I've actually had Bethany do parts of my website beautifully, by the way. Um, and I recommend Bethany for people who want to hire a website designer for a full, um, you know, if they, you do need a website. But one thing I, I noticed 
is that when you are first trying to create an online course, you want to actually not just think of who you're trying to attract, but also how is it that your branding is going to actually draw people away who aren't a good fit. So for instance, you know, there are some people online who primarily work with female identifying people. And so they might use color palettes that are associated with femininity, possibly pinks and lighter pastel colors, cool colors. Other people might attract people that are really focused on luxury, you know, things that are much more uh, high class elite fashion forward, you know, so their colors might be bold in contrast, you know, very striking. Um, and so, you know, I was talking with a friend and I was talking with um, her and she said, you know, I really want to attract this person. And we went through describing what this person's day-to-day -day process looked like. What does their job look like? But more than that, I said, well, who is it that you want to work with? I get who you're trying to attract, but who is it that you want to work with and who do you not want to work with? So, you know, that might actually influence adding memes, you know? So this person was wanting to be more playful. She wanted to attract people that were fun to work with. She didn't want to attract somebody who just had the money, who just fit the ideal client avatar type. My husband just jokes around about saying avatar because he always thinks about the movie Avatar. And he's like, okay, Melody, I can't take you seriously when you say avatar because I think of the movie Avatar and I think <laughs> of that blue person. And so, um, Anyways, that's a whole nother story, but I think it's really important, as you said, Bethany, to think about who you are attracting and that, that psychology. It's so very important and influences so much of your, your presence online, social media, website, courses, et cetera. So tell me more about this psychological process. You've talked about the archetypes a bit, and I will for sure mention that quiz and share with that link with people once I publish this out into the online space, what would people need to do if they once determine their archetype? What's that next step look like for them? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So you've got your archetypes. You're going to um, marry them together. Now, before I get into that, I just want to say, I love your point about figuring out what is not you too, because a lot of times I think it's e a little bit easier to, to lean into like, okay, here's what's not working for me. Here's what I don't like. I think this is really special when you're developing your brand lexicon or your brand copy messaging, the words that you'll be using regularly. I always work with my clients and say, okay, make a list of all the phrases within your niche, within your industry that are overused, that you don't like, that don't appeal to you, that don't work. And that's such a good place to start because then we can do the opposite of those and get all the antonyms and be like, okay, so this is probably more like the words phrases that you do want to use. On top of that, when you get your archetype, you can align your words and phrases with that archetype. So the ruler archetype, which like you said, there'll be a color palette for that. It's luxury. It's elite. It's meant for high end. It's like Mercedes Benz, you know, um, it's going to attract a certain type of client, Cartier jewelry kind of thing. So you're going to look at those bold colors, metallics, neutrals, things like that. But then with the copy an, a brand like that is not going to have a Toyota thon right? Those are very different things. I think car brands are kind of fun because you can like look at the exact type of client. Like they're not going to have a budget deal. They're not going to have anything DIY because that's not their customer base. They're going to have members only. They're going to have limited access kind of things. So that copy is going to be totally different. Um, so when you're thinking about your archetypes, you can kind of think about car brands. I like to use like Tesla, Jeep, Toyota and Ford are all selling to very different people. And so, you know, is there a need for all those types of cars? Probably, but they're each going to sell to a very different people with a very different um, marketing strategy. So all of that ties in together. But you're going to marry your archetypes. And this is how you are unique, right? Because if you just had one, then there'd be hundreds of the ruler archetypes and no one would be really quite unique. So you have two and you marry them together. And I wish there was like this perfect formula for how you marry them together, but there's not, it's like a relationship. They're all different, right? So the way that you put them together is really dependent on, um, 
which way you're leaning more towards. So when you get your results, it'll tell you like an overview, your unique gifts, your brand voice, and how you can show up in your visuals. So for me, I'm the expert and the explorer. Those are my two archetypes. And I come across with the expert in my copy in how I am speaking to people and how I present ideas around branding. When I show up in my visuals, it's definitely more the explorer archetype. And that you can see that in my greens and my earthiness and like using um, certain copy words like unearth all tie those together. So you kind of have to decide um, how that's going to happen for you and how it's going to um, look best and serve your business best. But at least you have like this starting place to build those pieces. I will say once you've kind of started thinking about that, you need some like basics before you're ever going to build a course or a product. And you need those nailed down, like chiseled into stone. Um, you need your fonts and, and please only have two fonts. I know that there are so many cute fonts on Canva and, and everywhere, but two fonts, that's all you need. You need two fonts. You need to have a color palette. And you can have up to six colors, but usually it's just good to keep three to five, especially if you're make, trying to put together your own branding. Um, and then you want to have your, your marks, which would be like your logo, and you want to have a few versions of those. You want to have your main logo and then a few sub marks, which just means like different variations of that. Um, so when you figured out who you're serving, how you're showing up um, and, and what your archetypes are and what those tie to, then making those decisions about your fonts, your color palette and your marks becomes so much more intentional. Going back to the ruler archetype example, if I'm choosing my font, I know that a sans serif font is a classic elegant font, right? It's what you see on a lot of like high-end wedding photographer websites, that sort of thing. So if I I choose that font, I know it's going to automatically align with that archetype and automatically like start, start creating cohesion amongst my business and my brand altogether. So that's how the psychology of it starts tying to those visual elements. And then we already talked about how color palettes each are kind of tied to a specific archetype as well. Um, and then when you're using these things, once you have established your fonts, your color palette and your marks, then you need to use those and only those. And I think people tend to be pretty good about using their logo regularly. But when it comes to colors and fonts, I, this is a huge brand mistake I see all the time is someone grabs whatever template is cute on Canva or over or whatever program they're using instead of sticking with their fonts, sticking with their color palette. And you can stick with your color palette by using the hex code, which is like a universal color code. It comes in you know, with every color you could have, you'll have a hex code attached to it and you would copy and paste that into whatever design program you're using. You do not grab the little dot and move it to like the color that's kind of close because it's not going to be the exact color and you want to stay on brand throughout all of it. It's just, it's so essential. Yeah, no, that's great. So I know, Bethany, that you are an expert when it comes to branding, web design and the psychology that is backed by this archetype framework. For people who are listening, many of them are actually online business owners and maybe just feel overwhelmed by the whole process. You know, how do they make it cohesive, go through the motions of setting all of this up in their online course and make sure that it's consistent I know you and I were talking briefly about web design when it comes to limitations with fonts. And I know you, I think you have a resource in one of your courses or programs. Um, tell us more about, you know, anything that you currently offer to help people who are just stuck with this whole branding thing, and maybe even some tips or resources on how to get started without feeling overwhelmed with branding. Yeah, absolutely. And, and branding is a, it's a huge thing and it's a pretty big deal. I mean, big brands have teams dedicated to it for a reason um, and dedicated to staying on brand. And I think staying on brand can be one of the most powerful things you can do because you're leveraging design consistently within your business. So I do have a course that's called the On Brand Blueprint. Um, and that course teaches you how to stay on brand in your visuals, in your messaging. It dives even deeper into all of the things that I've touched on and it's totally self-paced. So you walk yourself through all of the activities and basically by the end, you're, you've put together your 
own type of brand guideline that you're going to come back to. And, and I would say that would be the key pieces. It's going to take some effort and some work initially, but you're going to put this all together in a document, right? You need to have it down on paper so that when you go to create anything in your business, you come back to that every time. Okay. What are my hex codes? Here they are. I'm going to copy and paste them. What is my font? Oh yeah. It's Montserrat. And I use that every time in semi-bold and I just know it. So once you have done it, once it's on paper, it's like it's done and you just always come back to that again and again and you don't have to like kind of sit there with all this frustration but putting that together can be super hard so my on brand blueprint helps you put that together it helps you pull together whatever you've had like if you haven't worked with a designer but you kind of put something together or you did and they gave you just a logo like this is the course for you because it teaches you how to create cohesion as a whole and if you have a platform that doesn't let you customize things, which a lot of course platforms I know don't, um, I ran into some issues. I'm, I have my courses on Thinkific and there's some areas where it's like, oh my gosh, I just, as a designer, I was like, what do you mean? I can't make it exactly how I want it, you know? Um, so if, if that's the case, there's some tips and tricks to make sure that you're still staying on brand. You're still showing up looking like your brand, even when it's not like something you can perfectly customize because the platform has limitations. Yeah. And I actually, I was talking with another designer about this and, you know, one thing that she had done was she actually, uh, I know it's a little bit of a pain, but she ended up doing it a very manual way with some of her graphics where she actually exported PNG files for the, the types of, you know, words. You did have to do some like resizing and formatting inside of the lessons. Yeah. Um, but I know that nowadays on Thinkific, they have an app marketplace and I believe the power up option created by Rob has an integration with allowing you to use more specialized fonts. I haven't personally used that, but I do know that there are options out there. And I know other course platforms like Podia have a lot more flexibility with that. Um, Kajabi and also Thinkific do, you know, require some and more advanced coding where you can hire a designer to actually do some more HTML and customize the look and feel a bit more. But I found for me, you know, most people are just looking for the content. So as long as you have a clear way to express your brand with the right colors um, and then have course materials like my workbook, um, I don't feel like it's so big of an issue that people ask for a refund, but it's more so about making sure that your content is more aligned with itself versus like struggling to maybe find a coder to fix the fonts in your yeah. platform. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I do think that's great. So awesome. So Bethany, I really appreciate you sharing all of these tips and strategies to get started with branding. And I love all of the different things you mentioned about psychology. Definitely felt like I learned a lot this session. Any other ways for people to get in touch with you or find you out uh, find out more about your business online. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm on Instagram at Bethany Works Design. Um, I'm on there all the time. That's my main platform. Um, and then, of course, you can go to BethanyWorks.com. You can email hello at BethanyWorks.com, um, and I will certainly get back to you. And then, yeah, if you have any questions about my courses, you can reach out that their courses.bethanyworks.com. Thank you so much, Bethany. I yeah. really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks so much for being here.